On this episode of Doing the Most, we are attempting the unthinkable. Crystal Mead. If you've been around the channel for a while, you know I'm a big fan of nostalgia. I like my old products, I like my old video games, and you know, I just like anything that's kind of 80s or 90s themed. And something that was really big in the 90s was clear stuff. Clear phones, clear Game Boys, clear laptops, clear soda. And I'm one of the world's biggest fans of Crystal Pepsi. I might have a Crystal Pepsi display of my own. And it's just like the magic of it, you know? A cola that's crystal clear. And I know that that's going to be really difficult to do on the home scale, but I figured for this April Fool's video, I would give it a go. And so you're going to get to see a little bit of the behind the scenes of how I develop recipes. This recipe is not locked in just yet, but I thought it would be fun to show you my process, starting with a hard seltzer, moving on to a session mead, and then typically after that, I will refine the recipe and brew one or two or three or 10 more batches after that. This video is sponsored by Amoretti. I ran into Amoretti at CiderCon and explained this project to them and they suggested that I try their clear cinnamon extract. You know, cinnamon extract usually has like a reddish or brownish color to it. Theirs is basically water white clear. And I only used that much in a five gallon batch to get the cinnamon flavor I was looking for, about a half an ounce. So a little bit also goes a long way. Amoretti sent me a bunch of other stuff, cinnamon syrup, apple pie with crust, and cinnamon bun to try. So I'll be using these in beers and other meads going forward. Amoretti is a big name in the brewing space. A lot of breweries and mead houses use Amoretti's natural flavorings. And so if you're into natural flavorings and don't wanna do the legwork of making your own tinctures, I would definitely suggest check out their website, see, what, uh, see what's available. I also have to give a big shout out to Heart Print. They helped me get these cans printed and ready in time so I could put, this isn't the mead version, this is the seltzer version that I made. I put it into cans so I could have that nice, beautiful can and pour shot. Check the description. There's gonna be a giveaway for this, actually, this can. This, this one I'm holding right here. So if you're the lucky winner, I'll ship this can directly to you. It could be a nice shelf piece, perhaps. There are some challenges to making a crystal clear cola. For one, cola usually has caramel color and caramelized sugars to provide some of its flavor. Also has stuff like cinnamon in it and citrus and citrus zest. And so there's a lot of things that bring their own color. So I'm gonna have to aggressively find this and uh, we'll see if the acacia honey that I chose for this is going to work. Acacia is usually the most water white honey you can brew with, but I think mine wasn't possibly true acacia. And so if I brew this again, I'm gonna have to get some imported from Europe where they have the whitest, most beautiful acacia honey around and I'm gonna have to pay to import that. So it's a good time to point out we have memberships and a Patreon for this channel. If you'd like to support, help me buy honey for these videos. You can become a member or patron, just like these lovely folks. This one's my favorite. So let's take a dive into my process for how this is made. Usually when I'm creating a recipe for hydromel, I'll start with a hard seltzer version. Then in the next iteration, I will add honey into it instead of using sugar. And for my seltzers, I use invert sugar. So I'm using heat and acid and water to boil the sugar and break the sucrose molecule down into fructose and glucose, which makes it easier on the yeast to ferment. I have done trials on this and it always seems that inverted sugar works better than just table sugar right from the package into your brew. So all that said, let's take a look at my process trying to come up with a clear cola session mead. So the ingredients for our first batch of Crystal Pepsi hard seltzer were five pounds of white sugar inverted and water to four gallons. Then for the cola flavor, we have 7.5 grams of phosphoric acid, two grams of tartaric acid, the zest of five lemons, the zest of 10 limes, 10 cinnamon sticks, eight cassia, two Ceylon, a quarter cup of dried orange peel, a quarter cup of dried tangerine peel, half a cup of toasted coriander seeds, half a cup of clear vanilla extract, five pounds of sugar, and about a half a gallon of water. For our session mead version, the ingredients were six pounds of acacia honey and water to four gallons. And then for our cola syrup, we had 7.5 grams of phosphoric acid, two grams of tartaric acid, the zest of five lemons, 
the zest of 10 limes, about a quarter of a dram of amaretti cinnamon extract, half a cup of orange peel, half a cup of toasted coriander seeds, half a cup of clear vanilla extract, and four pounds of acacia honey with about a half a gallon of water. If I was going to do this one more time as a session mead, I would follow these ingredients. For the cola syrup, I think this made for the best mix of flavors. First off, I made a hard seltzer version of this recipe just to kind of test how the flavors would work out. And I did a lot of research, reading books and old recipes to try and kind of come up with an idea of what we would want in here. But just to start out with, we're gonna be inverting some sugar. So that was our tartaric and phosphoric acids that went in here. And we're gonna put in a little bit of water, bring it up to a boil, and that will invert the sugar, breaking the sucrose down into glucose and fructose, which give the yeast a little bit of an easier time starting fermentation. After that comes to a boil, just cover and allow to cool. Once it's cooled to room temperature, dump it right on into your carboy and then you can start adding your water. Here I topped mine up to about four gallons. And then I pitched in a yeast starter of EC1118 and covered that up to ferment. After primary had completed, it was time to prep all of our ingredients and make our syrup. So the first thing I did was toast the coriander seeds. Just as they started to brown and get smoky, I threw in the rest of our spices and some water and brought it to a simmer. Once the simmer was achieved, I cut the heat and put in our zest and our vanilla extract. I used clear vanilla extract here, trying to make sure I had the clearest product possible, and about a half cup of that one in. Then we're gonna cover that and leave it for four hours. After four hours, I poured my syrup onto the stabilized hard seltzer, and then we let it clear. I ended up having to put some sparkaloid in here, so that way it would pull all the stuff to the bottom. And it got really, really clear, but it never got, you know, the water white I was looking for. But when you pour it, it pours looking relatively clear. The flavors were pretty good, so I moved on to making a session mead version of this. So our honey goes in, our yeast and water go in, and that ferments dry. And then once that's fermented, it's time to make our syrup. So this time I did a little bit of a light crush on the coriander seeds, not a total crush, just to break a few of them up. Got those toasted. And then our water went in and the rest of our spices went in. Then I added the back sweetening honey and some water stirred that up and brought it to a simmer. I added our acid, and then I would be adding our cinnamon extract. Cinnamon extract went in there, and then our zest went in, and mine, I had zested a few days before, so mine went in frozen. Once everything was combined, it's time to put a lid on that and let it sit for four hours. And then I poured my syrup onto the stabilized session mead. I should have racked onto this, but stupidly I thought I had plenty of room. Turns out I didn't, so I had to end up pouring the rest of it into the bottom of a one gallon carboy. And then I cleaned out a five gallon carboy, sanitized it, and I poured the remainder of the syrup into the bottom of the five gallon carboy and then racked the rest of the mead on top of that. And once that had cleared up, I got it into a keg and put it in the keyser to carbonate. Hard seltzer, session mead. As you can see, the colors are relatively close. The session mead's obviously more yellow, and the hard seltzer, while relatively crystal clear, has just the faintest straw yellow kind of color. And that's just, you know, there are dark color compounds in granulated sugar. And while it doesn't look like it when it's a crystal, apparently, it has just enough color to be present. So, slight differences. 
The biggest difference is in flavor. This has all the cola flavor you want, but it's just a little bit too sweet. I did five pounds of sugar to back sweeten this, four pounds of honey to back sweeten the session meat version, and honey is less sweet when diluted than sugar just going by weight. And so not only did I sweeten it by pound less, but by concentration of sugars less. So this is significantly less sweet. And the less sweet version is much more refreshing. The hard seltzer is a little bit more cloying and you don't notice the acid as much, but the acid balance in this is really nice. You get the cinnamon flavor, you get those big citrus flavors, nice pop of acid, good round honey sweetness. This is like 85% of the way there. And you know, we use the clear Amaretti cinnamon extract for the session mead. It worked pretty well, but it provides a real kind of one punch cinnamon flavor. Whereas I think using cinnamon sticks and doing that four hour infusion into the syrup gives you a more comprehensive cinnamon flavor. It's woodier, it's more tannic, it's just more well-rounded. So while the extract worked pretty well, I like the contributions of the whole cinnamon sticks quite a bit better. Here's what I will do when I will brew this again, including I will get some bougie over the ocean acacia honey to make this with, trying to find the most water white honey I can find. And this is how I would brew it up. I'm really happy with where the recipe is now. Maybe someday I'll put out a video finalizing the recipe, but you know, April Fool's is my favorite time of year and April Fool's didn't fall near a video release day this year, it fell on a Monday. So you got last week's video, you're getting this video. And then there's another jokey video coming next week. Overall, I'm really happy with the success of this. It's pretty darn close. I'm gonna keep iterating on it. Do I ever think I'm gonna get just a water white session mead out of this? Probably not, but it's, you know, it's worth experimenting to try and get something just the way you want it. Look in the video description for how you can enter to win this. You gotta be over the legal drinking age in your state, and this is gonna be limited to US residents only. This is actually the hard seltzer version that we canned up for this video because the mead version wasn't clear just yet. Crystal mead. Homemade brews and various artists, everything from mead to rose. Big creation, fermentation, inebriation, doing the most.